Hi everyone, I thought I would just catch you up with what I've been up to. I have made a Christmas jumper, as you can see this is what I'm wearing. And um, this was made out of a French terry fabric using a pattern I already own, which is the Simplicity Toaster Sweater, which is I think 8529. I will put it on screen if that's right or wrong, so you know. So it's a pattern I've used before and I did have it cut out as a medium grading to a large, but it was really sticking out. So I then chopped it on my overlocker. So the band on the inside has got overlocking right down to the very bottom hem, but no one really sees that. So I also used um, ribbing for the neckband and for the cuffs, because when I found this pattern, the, um, the neckband is too short on the pattern and even when I've tried to add like an extra inch to it, when I make it out of the same fabric, there's just not enough stretch there and then it bunches up. So this is my first time using ribbing with this pattern and it sits nice and flat and it's worked out really well and it means that I can pull the sleeves up because I think sometimes when you use the cuffs with the fabric the, of the main fabric you haven't got that stretch there and you can't I quite often I can get like that but I can't fully like pull a sleeve up on a sweatshirt usually so I made this from a French terry fabric and it has a kind of knitted um I don't know if I'm like close if, if, if it doesn't show on screen I'll put a close up so it does look like it's sort of knitted it's a fleecy back French terry and I got it from Caboodle Caboodle Textiles, Caboodle Fabrics, Textiles I think. Once again, I will put their link down to their site on in the description box below. So this has a band at the bottom and then obviously the, the front and the back. Um, it went together quite easily, like I said, it was, it was a bit oversized on me, so then I did like trim it down. But I made it because every year we have in the UK, it's becoming more and more popular, Christmas Jumper Day, and people use it as an opportunity to raise money for the Save the Children Fund. But where I work at school, they then also have the Christmas Jumper Day, so it was like the 13th or something like that of December. So I thought I'll just whip up a jumper and I wanted something festive, so, and I have been to my daughter's Christmas fair from her primary school today, so I thought I'd just do a quick video showing you what I've made, and to wear with it, and to wear with it, I wore, I had to, I had to wear a mask because they were having the um, school fete in the, uh, the village church, actually, so it's a really nice, I'll pop a photo in of when they had the um, Christmas fair, it's really nice, it's in a little village, so I had to wear a mask and this is, and I wear a Christmas one and it's out of fabric lift over it. So I made some cushion covers, I think I made cushion covers. And this is from First for Fabrics that I bought last year. And it's the 3D face mask. And I have, I have made this mask quite a few times before but without the top stitching so it sits flat on my face. But this time I did make a few and when I bought this elastic, it had these soft um, little beads which meant you can then make it um, adjustable for your ears. So I thought, actually, I will make one for myself with the adjustable straps and see how that is. And actually, it's fine. I've worn this at work today and I wore that to the fair. So I thought I'd show you. But on that theme of work and Christmas, I've made a few little gifts. So I thought I'd show you. A few years ago, one of the teachers at my work made us, um, made us all little gifts. It's like a thank you because I work as part of the support staff. So um, we used to support the teachers with getting resources and getting the kitchens ready and cleaning the kitchens away afterwards and organising all that kind of thing and just like run around for the teachers that is our job but sometimes the teachers will then give us a gift to say thank you and she gave us homemade gifts and on my tree here here's one of them it's a little needle felt little needle felted robin so it's a little needle felted robin and I think there's a penguin as well and I just really like it. I mean, our tree, I thought I'd just film in our living room because for once my husband's 3D printer is not running so it's not making noise in there and it's really bright in here with all the lights on as opposed to my sewing space in the conservatory which is pitch black. So I thought I'd just show you. Now our tree is not a designer tree with everything meticulously coordinated. It has handmade decorations on which other people have given to me or bought for children. There's a bauble which was bought when my husband was born, the year he was born. So it's like a real mishmash of things. But I really like it. 
But anyway, so the colleague, um, she no longer works at the same school where I work, but she made, so she gave us all two needle felted little tree decorations, and then one year it was a chopping board from like the bark of a tree, from like just a slice out of a tree trunk, and then a homemade apron. So when she left, we then made presents for her, and then it kind of started a little thing of like, actually it's quite nice to make something, and the teachers don't expect it at all, because um, my colleague today, one of the teachers, she gave me, she gave me a gift, and um, uh, it's my last day tomorrow, but she brought it in today, and I said, oh, I didn't realise we're doing gifts today, I've got something for you tomorrow, and she said, no, she goes, I want to give you something as a thank you, you, I don't expect you to give me a gift, and I said, well, I make things, so I quite enjoy it, and it has been quite fun, but it also can be, at this time of year, can be a bit stressful, and this year I decided, right, okay, I'm just, well, I try and use things that I've already got, so then it keeps the cost down, and it's more of a token gesture, so one year I made F1 little hand warmers, I found her instructions on Pinterest, filled them full of rice and popped a few drops of, like, lavender oil, I think it was, or lavender scent in them, so you can microwave them, and then they all seemed to like them, and they didn't, they didn't work very big, and they didn't cost loads of money, it was just, like, a little gesture of, I've spent some time making something, and I hope you like it. And then they all said they'd been out for winter walks and used the ham warmers, which I didn't think they, I thought they'd go, mm, thanks, and ditch. And this year I've also, one of my colleagues, one of the teachers gave me some damson gin and some homemade jam, and it's just so nice. So I've got to wrap my presents and take them in tomorrow, but I thought I'd just show you quickly. Last year I made mainly tote bags. One of my colleagues didn't have any face masks and she kept kind of hinting. And so I made her three, um, to three face masks out of some Liberty fabric that I had. So for that same colleague, I've got a little bar of chocolate, but I also made her of the 3D face mask again. So um, two face masks. So these are from like a burgundy gingham. And this time around, because last time I didn't put them on, this time around I'm putting the bees, so, because the ones I made last year were like slipping down a bit, and then we went straight into lockdown, so I didn't see her in January to like adjust the elastic or anything for her, so it was too late, so this year I've put the little sliders on, so she can then adjust them, because I've got quite a fat head, and my, if I make ones that like, I, I've made this the same size and the same loop length as the elastic on that Christmas mask, a lot of people will find that slips down on them. And obviously you can't try this on because you're making it for somebody else. It's got to be hygienic. So I thought I'll put the sliders on there and then hopefully that will fit her. And I'll show you where the fabric's left over from actually because now we're in the living room. I'll show you this as I dig this out every year as part of my decorations. And I think I made this before I was into proper sewing. Like I didn't have a sewing machine. I'm pretty sure I didn't have a sewing machine. I just made it by hand. So. It's quite rough around the edges, but I can't. Let me just show you. So, as I swing around, this is our fireplace, as it currently is a bit of a mess down there. But um, this garland here, so I made this. There we go. So, I made this, and it's just been roughly hand stitched. But this one here, these hearts, um, are made from that gingham fabric, and then I found I had some leftovers. So, and she loves, my colleague loves gingham. So I thought I would make some masks for her. Um, this is nice. And you'll also see, see if you can spot the um, Star Wars in the living room. Yeah, so gift number one. So there's five colleagues. One is a temporary teacher who doesn't know that I really sew. We not we don't spend lots of time together. She, I worked with her like eight years ago when she came and did maternity cover. And then that's it. And then I don't think I was probably sewing then and then she's come back to do some sort of cover as well so she's not permanent she's sort of in and out of the department obviously don't leave her out but times of you know I'm really tired it's so dark and anyway I've cheated I have bought her some chocolate and I haven't made her a gift but I don't think she'll realize because she wasn't in the department since we started doing like handmade gifts. I think I can get away with it. So gift number one is the face mask and it with chocolate. Gift number two is chocolate that I've bought. Gift number three, colleague um, gave me some homemade apple juice. And so I've made her a denim pencil case. Nothing exciting. The zip is quite small. I have lots of zips and it's not, it's a bit off center. But to be honest with you, 
I just haven't had time and I think it's, you know, the thought that counts is relatively neat and I have, you can fit, because I thought, can I fit, actually fit pens in this and make it too small? And then I overlooked all the edges on the inside so, because denim can fray quite a bit and then she can just pop whatever in there. I'll roll it up, put a ribbon on it and I think she'll appreciate that. She gave me um, felted soap last year, so it's soap in felt, it was really weird and she said that the felt acts as a natural, um, has like natural antibacteria properties or something on it, I don't know, but yeah, so gift number three, gift number four and five are the same, so I'll just show you one, now I made a jumper, um, a sweatshirt a while ago and it was really big so I did my usual try and chop it down on the overlocker and it's just like the neckline is the whole thing is just I think the knit was quite loose and so it's dropped when I've held it the weight of the um, pattern like the fabric and in the pattern has dropped and it came out loads like bigger than when I made it in, made the same pattern in like a French terry so I haven't worn it and I did contemplate chopping it up but I might try and make it into a smaller jumper for my daughter or something she quite likes the fabric but I did have a, a little off cut and so it's glittery you can maybe just see it there and then on the underside of it it's just a, um, a grey loop back jersey I tried this with the, so I thought I'll just double it over the glitter, the glitter holding the fabric gets was quite itchy on my neck so I have acted it as a lining and then I tried, I've really struggled to work out how to get like the seams all nice and neat um, because how do you turn a circle? I sort of end up chopping it and chopping it and chopping it and then in the end I have I've done it a bit on the ins I've sewn the inside then I had to flip it over and then just hand stitch like in a cl the closing for it that probably doesn't make sense I would try this on this little kind of lipstick on at the minute and I don't want to get that on it so it's a snood so it sits not too tight but just sits around the neck um so one of the teachers she has a dog so she goes um, for dog walks and I thought that would just keep her neck nice and warm and the other colour she likes she lives out in the country and she likes to go on country walks and I thought right those two can have a snood and keep their neck nice and warm and then my colleague who is always running short of my face masks and she's worn the one the liberty ones I made her last year she wears them every week and she loves gingham she is redhead she's late 50s so the sort of the gin she's not a real strong redhead but she loves like burgundy and that kind of thing so I think it would be right up her street and obviously then the pencil case I just had some denim and I didn't know what to do and I did think about making fabric um, like plant pot holders I just ran out of time and motivation to be honest to do it so I thought okay pencil case that will do so they are the gifts um, which I need to wrap up so I just wanted to show you them um, for work they're Christmas gifts now I wanted to give you also an update on my Aura jacket now this is the jacket that I made the other month I can't remember when I made this now. I made this quite recently and I don't know if you remember when I went like that the, the sleeve was just really short. How short the sleeves were, excuse the hair tie on the wrist, how short the sleeves were on this. So these sleeves have a facing to them and I didn't know what to do and I'd lined it so I unpicked the sleeve facing and took it off and then made that into a cuff and then cut another sleeve facing so the facing became a cuff so instead of being on the inside it was an added on on the outside here that's just natural where it's folding but the actual so here I am um, that facing became a cuff and then I put a facing on it so it the lining meets the facing and I don't have to extend the lining and it was fine the one thing left to do is I need to put some snaps on now I did say previously it was a little bit snug around it's fine around here there's a little bit snug around my hips so but because it kind of it curves out um, I'm not I don't think I'm gonna put a snap at the very bottom I'll just leave it up a little bit and then space them out I have ordered those snaps just haven't got around to doing them but I have been wearing this coat as my go-to coat most days for the last couple of weeks so I really need to get it because because it's quite stiff it kind of sits out and if I put my hands in my pockets 
it just naturally falls open so it's just as well that this lining looks okay as well but I want to be able to have it done up and then put my hands on the pockets are massive they are like all there you could but I have lost my gloves a couple of times they've fallen out but yeah nice deep pockets so you can just like quickly put your gloves in or your car keys in just to quickly find them but overall I'll just give you a quick twirl so this was made with a pre-quilted fabric that I then just added a lining to it did come up quite tight and the armhole this, um, is a bit high up so really you'd want to drop it down a bit so I would definitely recommend if you want this pattern do this pattern definitely twirl it first I did and thought it was a bit snug but I was being lazy and don't make the alterations which I should have done I also extended the length on this jacket because originally it was going to finish uh, above my hips like maybe at my waist which is fine I think for like a springtime but for this type of weather and you're wearing jumpers and cardigans they were going to poke out at a funny length so I extended it but I forgot when I, ex I extended it by like five inches but I forgot when I extended it to allow for the difference between my waist and my hips so I just went down and then of course I do have quite a difference and then that's why it was a bit stuck by my hips so that's the only reason but I quite like it it is a quilted jacket pattern but I used I cheated by using the pre-quilted fabric but I thought I'd just give you an update so I did extend the sleeves I have been wearing it just need to get the hammer out and get those snaps on I just remembered one of the last times I spoke to you because it has been a while I was getting in a dilemma about what to wear if my husband had a new job and he was going to a Christmas work do and I was invited and it was going to be this sort of like dinner dance type situation didn't know what I was going to wear and I was in a bit of a panic so I'll just uh, I'll quickly just update you on that one which we, if you've seen my community tab and the photo on there you'll see that I chose the dress we went and we had a really good night. Everyone's really friendly. It was re the DJ was way too loud. It was like being in a nightclub, even at the meal. He had that music pumping out so loud, like a Nelly like burst an eardrum with people yelling my ear all night. But I wore a dress that I bought. Now I tried on a few. I went shopping to see what style suited me and it was quite an eye opener. Um, because I'm short waisted, when I tried on, it was like a sort of a wrap over top. The, the bodice was too long so then the, the wrap was kind of like peeking out so I knew that if I bought that I would then have to adjust that. That's quite a common alteration that I make when I do a pattern that I do take an inch out at the waist. They also had long sleeves with like a sequin cuff. I found it really irritating on my skin and actually it was really hot when we were dancing and dan it was freezing cold outside. But if you're up on the dance floor and get really hot, I think I would have been tempted to try and roll sleeves up. So I went with a lace sleeve and quite a fitted dress, which is I had not something I had in mind at all. But when I looked at the patterns and I was looking at a Vogue pattern which was going to be sleeveless and I was umming and ahhing and I was going to have alterations. It was creeping up I just felt like I didn't have much time and in the end I bought the dress for £55 and that was delivered um, like free delivery because over £50 so £55 and I thought would I have been able to buy a, not a good pattern and then would I have to twirl it probably and then if I wore it in lace by the lace and the under and then possibly a lining and a zip and the notions I'm not sure that I could have made it any cheaper or much cheaper I possibly could have done it for 40 pounds if I'd looked around but I just didn't have time just because we so it is still okay to buy clothes and I nearly forgot that myself and I was putting stress under myself and when it came I tried it on in the shop and I wasn't sure and I was like sending photos to my husband because he was away at Comic Con that weekend and he was like I, I did a few I put them on my Instagram and I said look at my Instagram and tell me which one you like and he liked the one I did which is the one I ended up buying and I'm really pleased that I did I was just stress free just to know that I had a dress my brother-in-law my husband's brother is getting married next year and it's a spring wedding in Northern Ireland now Northern Ireland is usually freezing cold most of the year so I'm not sure that is in the back of my mind of will I start to think now about planning ahead for a dress or an outfit or will I just go ahead and buy something near the time? I'm not too sure. That will probably be in New Year's plans. At the minute, I can't really think that. We're still in December. We are edging towards the end of the year. Um, I hope to do a review looking back on um, all the things that I've made this year, which hasn't been as much in the last few months, and there has been a reason for that. I will probably go into that 
in a video, a separate video. I just wanted to pop on here just to say I'm sorry I haven't uploaded recently. I just haven't felt like it and if I don't feel like filming, I do just take a break now and again from YouTube. But I'm really glad to be back and just to share with you and I hope that you may get some inspiration and things that you can make using up your fabric scraps and things you've got lying around. I hope you have a really good Christmas. I break up tomorrow, so I've got the whole next week off, so I'm hoping to get some videos done because I have more time. I now have some time in the daylight and get some vitamin D, which I think I do need and probably all need at the minute. So I hope you're all keeping well and I will see you again soon. In the meantime, don't forget to check out my 12 Makes of Christmas from a couple of years ago, which also has some crafting inspirations on there as well, including reusable crowns, which I do have, and we got them out with the decorations, which we'll be wearing at our Christmas dinner. So if you want to know all about that, have a look at that playlist and I'll see you over there.